wherever we look in Holy Scripture, we find expressions of thanksgiving and a call to give praise to the God of the universe. We'll find this theme of thanksgiving in the life of the patriarchs. David was a man who was very thankful and expressed that thankfulness in so many of his psalms. The prophets were thankful people. You pick up the reading of uh, Daniel, the prophet, and you find that he offers up thanks in a very difficult place when they were in exile. The Psalms, wherever you read, you leave the Old Testament, come to the New Testament, and there in the New Testament we find the Apostle Paul calling us to be thankful people. And on many occasions in the letters that he and other of the apostles write, they are thankful to God, they're thankful to people, they're thankful for situations. And so the scriptures are full of this theme of thanksgiving. It's prevalent, it's there, it's dominant, it's constant thanksgiving. And so we gather together and say, now our God, we give thanks and we praise your glorious, glorious name. Thanksgiving. The three things I'm going to share with you about Thanksgiving today, actually four of them are prevalent in all situations, and it's be God-focused. But for now, it's prevalent. That's what we've begun to say. It should be prevalent in our lives. It should be there all the time. If you've driven by and seen signs on church bulletin boards outside, notice boards, well, on one church I had this statement, for the Christian, Thanksgiving is not just a day, but a way of life, a way of life. It's good to sometimes focus in on certain things, certain aspects of Christian life, and Thanksgiving is a good weekend to do that, but not just today, not just this last week. But all of our last month and last years and all that's coming ahead of us, just constantly, we are like the people of the scriptures to be full of thanksgiving. Let me give you the words of King David when he says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Or Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord for joy. Let us shout to the, aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Come before his presence with thanksgiving and extol him with music and with song. And we just followed the scriptural directive today, didn't we? Just to extol God with music and song to come together into his presence with this thanksgiving. And so we are very thankful today. Thankful today. I think one of the Psalms uh, you're most familiar with is 100, Psalm 100, and which is, enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And so on this Thanksgiving Day, we would remember how it's to be dominant and to be there in our lives. Thanksgiving is to be at all times and is not dependent on our circumstances. Now, this is the difficult part, isn't it? Not dependent on our circumstances. You see, the scriptures tells us and the scriptures describe how Christian people worship God in every situation they find themselves in, that we go to God. Our lives are constantly directed to God in every situation. And so the circumstances does not cancel out thanksgiving, but is to be there all the time. There's so many psalms that we could have read this morning. We read one that talks about nature, how Sun, moon, stars, everything's supposed to express praise to God. There's another psalm, Psalm 107, where the psalmist writes about difficult places and distressful moments and, and hard times. And, and, and in every situation, despite whether you're in the mountains or in the sea, in the valley, we are always to be praising God. 
And in that Psalm 107, out of the predicaments, out of the difficulties that God's people have come, they are to then be expressive of thanksgiving to God. So our situation in life is not to determine if we are thankful or not. We must find a way. We must discipline ourselves. We must always be ready to say, thank you, God. Even in the hard times. That's a discipline to develop, isn't it? Now, life does bring us many good things, doesn't it? We had a little reflection in our prayers about those good things and the reading about the good things. And you stopped and you thought about some good things in your life. Yes, life is filled with many good things. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. And so we're thankful to God for those bright days, those happy moments. But, haha, the old but of life. But life also brings its difficulties, doesn't it? Difficult situations come. And we must not neglect to worship God even in the hard times. Every aspect of life, we're to be turning towards God constantly. And life is this variation of its ups and downs, with its sweet and its bitter, with its yeses, I like this, and no, I'm not sure I want to go in this pathway. And the Bible recognizes that our journey will be this mixture of experiences in life. Let me give you a couple of little stories or references from the Bible. Remember the book of James? James recognizes that life will be the series. And he says, the two situations you may find yourself in, one of them you should be singing and the other one you should be praying. James tells us, you know, when you find yourself in happy situations, then sing psalms, right? Sing praises. And then he says, those of you who are sick, pray. Now, notice, in both situations, when things are going good, you're turning to God in songs. When things are difficult and hard, you're turning to who? God in prayer. Everything is directed to God. Everything. And that's the whole focus on how we are different than the rest of the world. In the good times, God, we sing your praises. In the hard times, God, we pray and we cry out to him. So whether you're happy or you're sick, it's a God-focused. Let me give you another story of how things can go well and then quickly turn to go bad. And whether it's going well or whether it's going bad, you should still be praising God in all circumstances. His name is the Apostle Paul. And he made the first missionary journey into Europe. He crossed over in the city of Philippi. And there was a conversion. There was a lady called Lydia, and she gave her heart to the Lord. Praise the Lord, convert here in Europe. And then she, the church started to form in her home. People got baptized. Praise the Lord, we got a church foundation, new church built in Europe. And then he's walking down the street in Philippi, and this girl possessed of a demon. And he turns around and he says, out of her you go, demon. And the demon leaves the girl. She was a, a fortune teller girl. Praise the Lord. Amen. Another deliverance. Excellent. Wonderful. Things are going great. Praise to God. And then the whole community now upset with him. And there's a movement within the town of Philippi to uh, deal with these newcomers that just destroyed their business. And so they get arrested. And you know what the story says? They get beaten. Hey, praise the Lord, I'm beaten. <laughs> okay, I'm flogged. And then he got thrown into prison at night. Hey, praise the Lord, we're in prison. Mm. At midnight, they're sitting in prison with their feet in stocks, and it's not a very pleasant situation, so you stop praising God, right? No, what, is, what does the story tell us? At midnight, Paul and Silas began to what? Sing praises to God. Now, interesting that life, you, you see good things happen, conversion, start of a church, deliverance of a girl from demonic activity, but right joined to that is arrest, beaten, imprisonment. But those men knew how to turn to God in all circumstances. 
And that's a lesson we have to learn and, and, and develop and, 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 and make sure that we are always people of praise and adoration to God. So praise, celebration of God's goodness is a constant and it's in every situation. Now I could take some time to talk about the pilgrims, those who left Europe, came to North America, and with we uh, sort of associate Thanksgiving with them as they settled in, the, in North America. They landed in Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts, in December 11, 1620. It was a difficult year to begin a new life in an undeveloped region. And we trace back our Thanksgiving. Although Thanksgiving was celebrated prior to that moment, it was the first Thanksgiving festival in North America that was established with the pilgrims who came here. And so we, we sort of trace our Thanksgiving themes back to that time period. Do you realize how difficult it was for the pilgrims that first year? It was a tough, tough, tough time. Let me just remind you of the year that preceded their thanksgiving to God. Remember, my point is, in all what? Circumstances, thanksgiving is be predominant. Well, 102 members came over and settled in Plymouth Rock. After one year, do you know how many were left alive? Less than 50% of them. With that many funerals, do you thank God? We're told there were 17 families and male heads of families. In that first year, 10 died, leaving only seven men over their families. Wow. There were 17 wives, and only three were left. Hmm. Can you praise God? When things are really that bad and that tough and that difficult? And the answer is we must learn to do that. Because life is filled with those mixtures. And this weekend, as some of you are gathering with your families, others are at a funeral. And as your family comes together, other families may be broken. And we must just learn to thank God in every situation, to find reasons to thank God. When I wrote my message up and was working on it earlier on, I had not yet visited some friends of mine. And this week, actually, I spoke at a uh, seniors meeting, and at one of those, at that meeting was a lady who is celebrating her 90th birthday. That's wonderful, isn't it? That's something to celebrate, and we're thankful with her about God's goodness to her all those years. And so we were a group of seniors celebrating good life that they've lived. But I also went to visit another friend of mine from a previous church where I pastored, and he just recently had a fall off of a, a, um, a ladder. You know, one of those, he was working, I think it was drywalling, and one of those ladders that go up, it's not too high, it's about three feet high. I'm of a stand, I would say, and he fell off the stand, hit his neck, broke, severed spinal cord, and now he's in a wheelchair, paralyzed from the waist down. And I, with the family, and talked to my friends, and I said, you know, you've lost something, haven't you, in this? And we were talking about some dreams that we're planning. He, his wife had just retired, and he was about to retire. In fact, she wanted him to retire the year before. And he didn't. And they were planning on dreams and travels and journeys and what they were going to do. And as I mentioned that, I, I, I looked at him and said, there's a lot of lost hopes and dreams here, haven't there, with this accident. And tears began to fill her eyes. But we didn't just stop there. We went on and said, but we're thankful for some things, aren't we? And we talked about opportunities and how, how even in the midst of that crisis, as they turn to God, they can find some comfort. And there are still some things ahead of them that they could still do. And in the midst of that tremendous loss, there was still expressions of thankfulness to God. Thankfulness to God. 
Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God concerning you. Work issues, food insecurity, family fractions, financial burdens, medical problems, health issues, marital stress, discipline of children, aged parents, broken relationships. Oh, there's so many things that can get us so down and we could turn away. When things are going, sing psalms. When things are not so good, pray, but always be turning to God and always find something to be thankful for in the midst of it. A sermon is never being finished, prepared. If you're a pastor, you know, and this morning when I was at my computer just going over my notes, another story came to my mind. Any of you know the uh, commentator Matthew Henry? All right, few of you know Matthew Henry's commentaries. Excellent, excellent. Long time ago. On one occasion, Matthew Henry was robbed on the streets, and someone took his wallet with all the money in it. So how do you respond to a robbery, to be invaded personally? Well, this is what he he reflected on later on. Can you be thankful when someone robs you? Mm, That's tough. To be thankful in those, that's tough. But Matthew Henry taught us something. He wrote this down. Let me be thankful first because he never robbed me before. Secondly, because he took, although he took my purse, he didn't take my life. Third, because although he took everything I had in that wallet, it was not everything that I own. And fourth, I'm thankful because I was robbed and I was not the robber. (laughs) Well, we got to learn how to turn difficult moments into some kinds of expression of thanksgiving. Now, the next thought is, so it's prevalent. It's to be out there, thankfulness. In all circumstances, we learn to do that. We looked at James and the Apostle Paul, and, oh, there's a verse in Habakkuk I wanted to share this way. It goes this way. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there's no grapes on the vine, though the olive crops fail, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, No cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. And so Habakkuk is saying, when things just empty out, I still have God. And for that I can be thankful. And that leads me now to the third point, which is this. That the cause of our thanksgiving and the focus of our thanksgiving is always to be who? God. To be God-centered, God-focused. You know, God will steady you. God will steady us in the most difficult of circumstances when we know him and connect with him. When we can look away from the situation and look to him and see him when we can see him. You know, one of the difficulties of Job and all of his losses, at one point he couldn't find God, he couldn't see God. And that was his need. But oh, in our Thanksgiving today, we see God, we know God. It has been said that a truly godly man will worship God for nothing. Worship God for nothing. And so we're thankful for the gifts, yes. Every good gift is from him, but we're thankful for the giver, who God is. So thankful to God for what he gives and for who he is. Now, let me tell you another story of, a, of David. It's in the book of Chronicles. This couple I was talking to you about who the husband is now paralyzed in a wheelchair. Um, I, I sent it to her as they were talking, you had dreams, didn't you? You had looking forward to after retirement, where you would travel, what you would do together as a husband. Finally, after the raisin she's mentioned, you know, we came over here, emigrated. We've been working since I was 18 years of age. I've raised my children. They've moved on in life. We finally retired, and now we were going to, and I can't do what we planned to do. And like God took away that dream from her. 
David, David, King David, wanted to do something very, very, very special. Do you remember what David wanted to do? He wanted to build a temple. That was his dream. That was his passion. I want, God, I want to build a temple, a splendor temple to your glory and to your honor. That's the legacy I want to leave behind, as well as my psalms. But he's so excited and passionate about that dream he had. What did God tell him? No. You're not, you're not building the temple, David. I'm going to give that to your son, Solomon. He will build the temple. You know what David did? He folded his hands and he pouted and he sat in the corner and said, God's not good. He's not letting me do what I really want to do. And look how good, I mean, I really wanted to be good to God and now God's not so good to me. My one dream, and he's taking it away. I'm done with God. Go ahead, do your plans, God. I'll just sit in the sidelines now and you can do your stuff. I'm out of it. No, David said, okay, God, you're not going to let me do it. Then let me help my son do it. I will get the gold. I'll put away the silver. I'll, I'll get all things prepared. And if you wouldn't let me do it, at least I'll participate the best of you. will let me. And, I will. and David was involved in preparing a lot of the resources so his son could build the temple. And so David had a, a, a desire denied. But David still went on to bless God and to, to worship him. And, and David's life was wonderfully blessed by God. And then in, in the book of Chronicles, after, David, after God says no to David, David still is wonderfully focused on God. Not just for what God was going to let him do in this situation what God was not going to let him do, but rather for who God was. And he could praise God for what, who God was. And so in Chronicles, you find David praising and thanking God. David, and remember, this is after God said, no, you're not building the temple. I'm sorry. I'm giving that to your son, not to you. David says, David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, praise be to you, O Lord, God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. He's exalting God. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom and you are exalted and you're head over all. Wealth and honor comes from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and to give thanks to all Now, our God, we give you thanks and we bless your glorious name. You see, his thanksgiving came out of who God is and what God gives. And his thanksgiving came out of who God is, no matter what the circumstances are. And so we are thankful It's prevalent in our lives. It's in whatever situations we find ourselves. It's because of who God is and what God gives. And today, we can be thankful for so many different things. For temporal and for spiritual. You've already thought about some good things God has given to you. And in our reading that Bob gave, it gives some elements of life that we can be thankful for. The earthly provisions. So let's move from the temporal, which we've already focused on and hinted at, and let's move to the spiritual. As we close, we're, as a church, as a people of God, a people of faith, we're so thankful for some spiritual things. The Apostle Paul set the example for us, Paul. Well, Paul was most thankful for his own conversion and his call to ministry. In Timothy 1, verses 12 to 14, he says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me faithful and appointing me to his service. Ah, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy. I was shown mercy. 
I was shown mercy. I was shown mercy. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ was poured out on me abundantly along with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Paul, he says, be thankful in all things, says, be thankful for your conversion and your giftedness to minister in whatever ways you are. His mercy is more. Is the song we're going to finish with today. The spiritual blessings. Paul had a very difficult life at the end. He was imprisoned. He was in prison for several years, and then he shipped off over the ocean to Rome. As he traveled to Rome, he'd gone through so many difficulties, and as he was traveling to Rome, he became thankful for some people that showed up in his life. The believers at Rome had heard that Paul was coming, and they didn't stay in Rome to wait for his arrival. They traveled towards Paul to meet him, to be greeted to greet him and for him to be greeted. The brothers there who had heard that we were coming, they traveled as far as Forum and Appius to the three taverns to meet us. At the sight of these men, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. One of the statements made this morning, we're thankful for each other. Isn't that wonderful? To come in this place, to be with each other. To be thankful for the fellowship of the Christian church. Paul thanked God for people. Paul thanked God for not only his own salvation in the Christian church, but for the salvation of the people of God. And in Colossians, it tells us, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Are you a Christian this morning? And can you be truly thankful that something has happened in you? God has qualified you. God has enabled you. God has done what is necessary so that you and I could be daughters of the King, sons of the King, children of the Heavenly Father. And we are saved. And Paul thanks God, thanks God, to the Father who's qualified us to be saints in the inheritance of the kingdom. And then it comes to the area of death and resurrection, victory over the grave. Paul is thankful for that too, for resurrection power. And in Corinthians it says, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, worship team, would you kindly come up and begin to set up to lead us in our closing hymn. Prevalent, let it always be in our lives. In every circumstance, let's train ourselves. Let's always be going to God, God-focused, not only what he gives, but who he is. And let us not only thank him for the temporal, earthly things of life, but let us be a people who see the spiritual dimensions which we have been blessed with. Our, open, our closing song says, What love could remember, no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not their sum. Thrown into the sea without bottom or shore, our sins there were many, his mercy is more. His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, and new every morn. Our sins that were many, but his, sin, but his mercy is more. Would you stand, please? Lord, hear our songs that we have already given and be blessed by them. Lord, take now our voices and receive them in this music. We celebrate your goodness to us and your blessings in the person of Christ Jesus and the abundant grace that we have. Amen.